In this video, we're going to talk about the relative strengths of acid and bases. And we're going to use this chart, uh, table 15.2, in the textbook. And this chart is extremely powerful because it's going to explain a lot of things um, in terms of acid and base strength that we sort of just assumed when we were doing chapter 4. But now we're really going to be able to explain everything um, in great detail. So if we look at this chart, what it basically is is we have a list of acids, and then we have a list of their conjugate bases. So it's not just bases. These are the conjugate bases of those acids. So you'll notice that with perchloric acid. With perchloric acid, we have the protonated form, perchloric acid. And then on the right-hand side, we have the base form, which is uh, the chlorate anion. And that is the deprotonated form. So these are conjugate acid-base pairs. So let's just kind of take a look at the chart. So what we notice is at the top here, we have the strongest acids. And down at the bottom, we have the weakest. And what's interesting, and the first thing that you might notice, is that the strongest acids, their conjugate bases are the weakest. And vice versa, the strongest bases have conjugates that are the weakest acids. This kind of makes sense, right? Because if an acid is very, very strong and it wants to give off its proton, then it's less likely that the conjugate base is going to want to take that proton back and go back to the acid form, right? Because the acid form is what's sort of pushing it in the forward direction. So it makes sense that when you have a very strong acid, its conjugate base is going to be weak because it's going to be very unlikely that that conjugate base is going to want to take a proton and go back to something that's already quite strong. So let's write that down as our first observation. This is that as acid strength increases, the base strength of the conjugate base decreases. So strong acids have weak conjugate bases, and strong bases have weak conjugate acids. And so we can write that down. So as the, strength, uh, as the base strength increases, the uh, acid strength of the conjugate base I'm sorry, of the conjugate acid decreases. So there's this sort of opposite trend with that. Now let's go back to our chart and take a look at something else that's quite important. So now a question that you might have is, how can I tell if I put something in water whether it will act as an acid or a base? And this is a really important question. So in order for something to act as an acid, it has to be stronger than whatever it's in. Right? So if something is going to act as an acid relative to something else, then that's going to have to be a stronger acid than whatever we're putting it in. So for example, if we're putting something in water, then in order for it to be an acid, it has to be a stronger acid than water. So let's find water on this chart in terms of acid strength. And it's way down here at the bottom. So water is way down here at the bottom. So that means that all of these things up above are stronger acids than water. So this list up here, these are all these acids are, acids are all stronger than water. And so if the acids are all stronger than water, then they're all going to act as an acid when we put them into water. So what that means is that if you look at this list and you find a species that's above water, then it's going to act as an acid. So for instance, we have HS minus. If you put HS minus into water, because HS minus is a stronger acid than water, it will act as the acid when you put it in water. And that goes for all of these other things. So let's write that down as another observation. So when you have, when a species is a stronger acid than water, it will act as an acid in water. So that's how I know that, for example, HS minus, when I put HS minus into H2O, that's how I know that HS minus is going to give its proton to water and make S2 minus plus H3O plus. That's how I know that because HS minus is the stronger acid and water is a weaker acid. And I get that from the chart. So if we go back to the chart, all of these acids that are here are stronger acids than water. So that's how I know that. Now let's look at the same thing for a base. 
So let's find water in the base spectrum. So water is right here in, t in the spectrum of bases. So the strongest bases are down here. So all of these things down here, these are all stronger bases than water. So if you find a species that is a, um, if you find a species on this list and it's below water on this right hand side, we know that that species is going to act as a base because it's a stronger base than water. So for example, F minus, you may be wondering if I put F minus into water, will F minus act as a base? And the answer to that question is yes, because F minus is a stronger base than water. So let's write that down as an observation. When a species is a stronger base than water. It will act as a base in water. And so we're going to look at two examples here. We're going to look at the case of F minus and of CL minus relative to this observation. So we have F minus and we have CL minus. Do these act as bases? So if we look at F minus, F minus falls into the category of bases that are stronger bases than water. It's lower on the list than water. So this one is going to act as a base. Cl minus, on the other hand, is above water in terms of bases. If you look, these are weaker bases than water. And if it's a weaker base than water, it will not act as a base, meaning uh, water will be a stronger base, so it will not act as a base. So in essence, these ones above water are neutral. So the, the weaker bases than water will be neutral in water. They will not do anything. So let's write down some reactions to kind of explain that. So now that we had a chance to look at the chart, we saw that F minus is a stronger base than water, and so therefore it's going to act as a base. So the reaction of F minus with H2O to make HF and OH minus, this will occur. On the other hand, Cl minus plus H2O, Cl minus is a weaker base than water, and so we are not going to get a reaction with water. What that means is that Cl minus is just going to sit in the water as Cl minus, and it's not going to take back any protons to go back to HCl. So we're not going to make HCl and OH minus. And actually, that's really important. And we're going to talk about uh, that in the, in the next couple minutes. We're going to talk about what is the consequence of that. So we call this a, a neutral ion. And we call this one a basic ion. So we know now that we can figure out if something is going to act as a base or neutral, depending on its position on the chart. So there's actually something very special that happens in terms of acidity. And you'll notice this, there's a cutoff. So if you look at this cutoff, we have H3O plus that's right here. And this is going to be very important. So there's another line right here that co coincides with H3O plus and H2O. So you notice that up here, all of these acids that are up here, HClO4, H2SO4, HI, HBr, HCl, HNO3, these are our strong acids. And this is really important because these strong acids, all of their conjugate bases are neutral in water. And we knew that from, we knew that from um, chapter four, because we don't write an equilibrium. We, we know that these, these acids completely ionize. They don't go into an equilibrium. So these strong acids are all special and they share something in common. These strong acids are all stronger than H3O plus. So let's talk about that as another observation. So what we just saw in the chart was that the strong acids, according to our table, all have an acid strength greater than H3O+. So why is this important? There's two important things that come out of this. So let's write down the reaction of HCl plus H2O. And so in this case, when we do this reaction, um, and you'll notice because this is a strong acid, I'm going to write it only in the forward direction. I'm not going to write it in the reverse direction. Uh, we're going to get uh, H3O plus aqueous, and we're going to get Cl minus aqueous. 
So let's compare this with a let's compare this with a, a weaker acid that's below this, and then I think this will help you to understand. For example, let's pick acetic acid. And so the difference between these two is that HCl has an acid strength greater than H3O plus, and CH3COOH has an acid strength less than H3O plus. So what does that mean in the context of these reactions? What that means is that when you put HCl into water, not only is this going to form H3O plus, but because HCl is a stronger acid than H3O plus, this side is going to be greatly favored And in fact, because HCl is the strongest acid around, there is going to be no, nothing to push back and make HCl again. The only, the strongest acid out of all, because all of, all of the possible acids in this case are H2O, H3O plus, and a Cl minus can't be an acid because it doesn't have any protons. But if you look at the possible acids that are around, HCl is a stronger acid than water, and it's a stronger acid than H3O plus, and therefore nothing can push back against it. Not even the H3O plus can push back against it. So the only direction this can go forward is in the forward direction. And so therefore, we're going to get 100% products. So acetic acid is an interesting case because acetic acid is greater in acid strength than water, but it's lower in acid strength than H3O plus. And let me just show you that on the chart. So if you look at acetic acid, that's right here, Acetic acid is a stronger acid than water, but it's a weaker acid than H3O+. So what does that mean for acetic acid relative to HCl? And see here, you'll see HCl, uh, HCl is uh, a stronger acid than both H3O+, and water. So that's what I was talking about in the previous example. So in this case, when acetic acid is stronger than water, it's going to act as an acid in water, and it's going to make H2O+. But relative to H3O plus, H3O plus is actually a stronger acid. So in this case, of these two acids, this is acid, this is one acid and this is another acid. This one is the stronger acid. And so the H3O plus is actually going to be able to push back. And in this case, we're going to get much less than 100% products. because the H3O plus is a stronger acid between these two, and therefore it's going to push back to the left. So that's the difference between a strong acid. A strong acid, HCl, is greater than both the H3O plus and the H2O. There's no acid present in water that can push back against HCl and form an equilibrium. On the other hand, acetic acid, it's stronger than water, so it will make some H3O plus, but that H3O plus is a stronger acid than the acetic acid, so it can push back and form an equilibrium mixture. There's another observation uh, that's related to this. So the strong acids have neutral conjugate bases. So if you look at the chart, all of the strong acids have conjugate bases that are weaker than water. And therefore, when you put those into water, they will do nothing. They are not strong enough as a base to go back and react with water. On the other hand, if we look at acetic acid, its conjugate base strength is greater than water. So therefore, these weak acids, these so-called weak acids, will have conjugate bases that act as bases. So let's write that down as an observation. So if your acid has an acid strength greater than H3O+, plus, it's a strong acid, and its conjugate base is neutral. If our acid is stronger than water, but less strong than H3O+, plus, this is what we call a weak acid because it's not going to be stronger than the H3O+. Plus. The H3O+, plus is going to push back against it. And its conjugate base has a, will have a base strength greater than 
water. So our con the conjugate base strength is going to be greater than water. So a weak acid will have a conjugate base. On the other hand, a strong acid will have a neutral conjugate base, meaning it will not react with water. The final observation we can make is related to strong bases. So what makes something a strong base? And you can see that on the list of bases, the strongest base of all, of all is OH-. And that's what you'll notice is that um, the sh of all the, the bases, OH- is the strongest base. And therefore, we see that in the chart of the strong bases. All the strong bases on, the, on, on our chart are, contain soluble hydroxide. Anything that has a base strength less than OH- the, the, the issue becomes the, its conjugate acid. So if you look, the conjugate acid of OH- is water, whereas with anything weaker than OH-, its conjugate acid is, uh, is an acid, and its acid strength is going to be greater than water. So you can see that because uh, OH-'s conjugate acid is water itself, when you put OH- into water, um, it is basically going to act directly as, as a base. There, there's going to be no comp there's nothing in water to compete with it because it is going to be the strongest base in water. On the other hand, all of these other ones will react with, with uh, will have an acid strength, a conjugate acid strength greater than water, so you'll get an equilibrium. Um, so that's why the strongest bases um, have OH- in them, and all of the other weak bases are, uh, all of the other bases are considered weak. So that's how we define a weak base. So weak bases have a base strength less than OH-. So our final observation is how do we define a, a weak base? So a weak base is going to have a base strength that is less than OH- minus, but greater than H2O. This is in terms of base strength. And therefore this is going to set up an equilibrium because, for example, if we look at NH3, which is in this category, uh, the NH3 is a uh, stronger base than water, so it's going to act as a base in water. However, its products, OH- and NH4+, the OH- is going to be stronger than it. So of the two bases, this is base 1 and this is base 2, the OH- is a stronger base and therefore will set up an equilibrium. It's going to push it back. On the other hand, OH- is a strong base because in this chart, there are no bases that are stronger than it to push it back. It, that is the strongest base in water. So those are the main observations that come from that chart.